Hey parents, Miss Evans here. I just want to take a minute to talk to you guys about the reading program that we're using this year and some of the strategies that we're using in class that you guys can mirror at home to really help the kids um, build a strong foundation for becoming great readers. If you haven't heard already, the program is called Phonics First from BrainSpring. The whole idea behind Phonics First is to use as many multi-sensory strategies as we can to really help solidify those letter sounds in students' minds so that they have that firm foundation that they need to go on and be strong readers in the upper grades. First thing I'm going to talk to you guys about is how we practice letter sounds. That's the basic building block here in first grade. We rehearse letter sounds every day and we do what's called a three-part drill. Um, the first part is the visual where I actually hold up a pack of letter cards and they see the letter, they give me the sound, nice and simple. That's something you could do at home with flashcards. Totally old school, but exactly what we do in class. The second part is the auditory drill. And in class, we use a dry erase board and marker to rehearse this. And now this is something you can also practice at home, the same strategy that we're using here. Um, it's also very simple. I give the students a sound, they tell me the letter, they write the letter and say the sound. Done. It looks like this. The sound we want is M. Mm. What makes the M mm sound? They would say M. I'd say good. Write it. And it looks like this. M. M. Mm. That strategy right there is something you guys can help me with at home because where we are right now, we're really struggling to write the letter as we say it. But with more practice, it will come no problem. Uh, the last part we do is we actually build words with those letter cards that we had just rehearsed with. And we read, sometimes they're real words, sometimes they're nonsense words, but even those nonsense words are important because they help us to practice the rules or phonics. And also those nonsense words, when you start putting them together, that's how you make bigger words. And whether or not you realize it, you're decoding those smaller words inside big words as they keep getting older and the words keep getting more difficult. Okay, uh, the next thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is sounding out words. We use a strategy called pound and tack. We do this with paper and pencil in class, but you can use any tactile strategy uh, to go along with that. Uh, it's very simple. Students have their writing utensil in their dominant hand. They make a fist with their non-dominant hand, and that's what they use to sound out the words. So for example, if I gave them the word map, they would pound it, map, and then tap it using the finger on the left. In my case, that would be my pinky finger here. So map, m, a, p, and then they would write m, a, p. We've already seen great success with this strategy in class, but it's a great way to practice your spelling words, especially getting ready for those surprise words that you don't see on the newsletter. You can also do that on dry erase board, or uh, one of the strategies that the kids are going to see here in class is using sand trays. Um, we have what's called magic sand, but it doesn't have to be that complicated. You can use regular sand in a tray, and they can write those words out in the sand. Mm, ah, Puh, nap. I know sand sounds like something crazy to bring into your home, but that tactile piece is really important for helping them solidify those letter sounds. You don't have to use sand. You could use anything that the students can touch. That means you can get out some old school magnetic letters and keep on your fridge or use them on a cookie sheet. You could even use shaving cream and spread it out on the table and let them write in it Smear, uh, smear it back smooth, write in it, smear it back smooth. It actually cleans your table. It's a good strategy for here at school. But just some ideas for ways that you can practice at home to really help bring that tactile piece into their homework and also make it a little more fun. The last thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is red words. You may have heard them called sight words last year. Red words is a phonics first term and the reasoning behind it is red means stop and with Red words, you have to stop and remember the word. Sight words, high frequency words, red words, just means that you cannot sound out this word. A lot of them do not follow the rules of phonics, and also they show up a whole lot in text anyway, so you don't wanna spend a lot of time sounding them out. These are those words like a, i, the, this, that, to, from, school. All of those words 
that we don't sound out every day when we're reading. Um, we have four of them every week um, with Jefferson County this year that we study. Uh, they come home on the newsletter. Uh, but the way that we practice them in class, the first day we introduce them is a very long process that I'm not going to show you because you won't have all those supplies at home. But the way that we review them is something really easy to do. It's a strategy called load and tap. All I do is I give the students the word like this, they load it, this, and then they tap it out on their other arm. T-H-I-S. Wipe it off. This. So one more time. This. This. T-H-I-S. This. We do that. We try to get it done every day to rehearse those red words, and we'll also go back and rehearse previous red words to make sure they're still stuck. If the student has no problem with it, we do it the one time. But if we see that uh, the class is hesitant on remembering that word, then we go back and do it three times. That's our um, magic strategy that we pull out there is anytime something isn't sticking, we repeat it three times, whether it's load and tap or whether it's to write it again. Uh, three is your magic number to help make things stick. All right, well, I hope that I've given you some hope here on uh, helping at home and using some of these same strategies. I promise you this program is fantastic when it comes to helping uh, build those foundational skills for kids and hopefully it'll make homework a little bit more fun for you as well Because it doesn't always have to be paper and pencil. Although we do have to make time for that, too. Thanks so much guys